Hi guys, uh, my name is Abhiraj, uh, and if you guys are watching, thank you for being here. I um, I decided to start this channel to to just document the things that I learn every day, and they're mostly very silly things, but the things that I find fun, um, and I hope you find them fun too. And by the way, if you're Indian, uh, you know it was Diwali uh, very recently, so happy Diwali. And talking of Diwali, I learned of something called Dashua, which is uh, a poor man's fireworks that originated out of China. So if you're if you're looking at the screen, you see this. You see a man flinging something at uh, at a wall, and you see the most gorgeous sparkles. And I saw this somewhere, I think on Instagram or something, and I just dwelled. Um, I just I just dived into it. Um, so anyway, what I what I when I dug deeper, I figured out, according to the Smithsonian Magazine, um, that in China, right about here, um, so the Chinese celebrate uh, the Lunar New Year, and they have for uh, almost four thousand years, and they do things like. Uh, eat dumplings and fish and wearing red which i'm guessing is auspicious and another thing they do is use fireworks and now um, the story behind the fireworks uh, without getting into the nitty gritties of it is is right here there used to be a monster nian and uh, there used to be a beggar who scared uh, the who scared the monster away by using uh, bamboo sticks and what happens is bamboo sticks are hollow from the inside so they create pressure and because of that pressure, um, I mean, I, I don't know I, the details exactly, but all I know is they made uh, these primitive sort of um, fireworks, and fireworks were just considered auspicious. And um, I'm just going on to the next uh, next one, just so that we can sort of um, anyway. So about 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 a hundred years ago, fireworks used to be expensive, and only the wealthy people in China could afford it. And uh, there used to be a Chinese village, which still is uh, Nuang Quan. I'm I apologize if I'm saying it wrongly. Um, they did not have the funds to start um, to get their own fireworks. That village. So what they did was that the blacksmiths of that village they got. Together, and they heated, uh, they heated up the the iron scraps, and what they started doing was flinging it at cold walls in the winter. And what that ends up doing is the temperature difference makes the uh, the molten metal spark like flowers or like fireworks. So, um, oh yeah, and if you read right here, it's about eighteen hundred degrees Fahrenheit, which is. Um, Anyway, so I googled Nuang Quan, and it is here. If I am to zoom out, it is somewhere in the middle of North Korea and Beijing, right here. Um, North Korea and Beijing, and apparently it's a four-hour train ride from Beijing. So I'm guessing it's about a the same distance, uh, give or take, from Pyongyang. A little, a little more, perhaps. Um, whoops. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I, I saw as a little more about the the um, the city of Nuang Quan, and I realized that literally the only attraction uh, is the sparkling molten metal. Uh, yeah, and besides that, uh, something called the paper cut, which I have no idea about, so I'm not even going to get into it. Um, anyway, um, so that actually got me curious as to um, I just wanted to see it more, so I'm just going to show you uh, more videos. Hold on, let me just reduce the size of my screen. Now, if you if you notice, 
that's sheepskin that the blacksmith is wearing. Um, yeah, there's a picture right here that shows you just that. That's sheepskin, that's a straw hat, and that's cotton, and I'm guessing there's a little bit of leather in there. Um, and it got me curious as to why and how. Um, so, f so turns out each new uh, lunar year, um, there's a tradition of sp splashing liquid metal heated to 1000 degrees and over and uh, at the city wall, uh, it's flung at the city wall and uh, the, the experts now know what shavings to mix. So they mix iron with copper and aluminum or aluminium uh, and now they create a variety of colors in the sparks and and like i said before uh the more vibrant the sparks are the more auspicious it is or the better the show is and um funnily enough it says even here in in on this website that uh the performers of such dangerous art keep rejecting modern protective clothing as it contradicts tradition and continue holding the ritual in sheepskin jackets straw hats and goggles uh, which is extremely primitive uh i i'm not even gonna lie i saw it and i just know i would love to see it if i ever have the chance uh, but there's a catch 22 um here's i'm not going to play this video you guys can definitely look into this um tell me what you think uh here is a video uh where you can clearly see what this guy is wearing that's very clearly sheepskin that's a straw hat and that's leather now just imagine all of that along with sunglasses and and you're good to go uh, handling about a thousand degrees and more of fireworks uh, i just thought it was relevant because because diwali is known for fireworks um here's here's the thing that really upset me there's actually only four dashua performers left in Nguang Kwan, and three of them are old which means there's only one young uh, blacksmith that does this skill and um, that makes me sad uh, but at the same time it's quite a cool tradition and um, I don't know I guess I, what can you do about dying traditions right like you can mm, I don't know um, anyway I found this and I thought it was super exciting um, Going forward, I'm going to keep covering things that bring me joy, that bring me excitement. Uh, I'm going to keep trying new formats. I'm going to keep twisting and tossing and turning and and molding. And hopefully, we come across, we we figure out a concept that's enjoyable for you guys to watch. Um, if you like this, uh, drop a link below. Uh, if drop drop a comment below. If you don't, drop a comment below. Uh, most importantly, just tell me. Uh, if you'd like me to cover anything else or if you have uh, any feedback as well and until next time see you